This lady, who we shall call Regina Nambi, had previously worked in Saudi Arabia and Oman. However, she says she did not achieve what she thought she would get in both places. When a friend connected her to a man who she says promised to get her a job in the United Arab Emirates, Nambi was ready to give it another try, hoping that she would achieve everything she had failed to attain in the last two attempts. He said, no need of money. And I told him, how are you going to do it? If you don't need money, how are you going to do it? He, she told me that the one who is going to give you the work, or she or he, whom I did not know from the beginning. He is going to process each and everything. They told me that I should have two and a half M to go. I had to pay the ticket. He told me like that. Then there is some money which I, did, I didn't know that he he is going to use that money for what? I did not ask a lot. Finally, Nambi got her visa and air ticket to the UAE ready to start a new life. Nambi, a trained chef, had hoped that she would do the same in her employer's house. However, she was later told that she would be given a totally different job. They told me you are going to work as a housemaid. Then I said, okay, if I'm going to work as a housemaid, it is a job also because I need money. A few months into her new job, Nambi's honeymoon was over. She claims that the employer started mistreating her. The woman was so loud. And even the man was so loud. Even the man wanted to help me. I decided to call the woman to talk as woman as woman. She did not listen. She just started slapping me all away. After then, I did not slap her back. It was at this point that Nambi decided to report to the authorities. However, the police did not do much to help her. I told, one, I told them that I just want to go back home. It's okay with me, even if I don't have money. But to go back home, it is better. They told me then, you have to pay five for him to this woman. And I told them, if she wants me to pay, and she doesn't want me because she told me I don't, she told them that I don't want her in my house again. And I asked them that if you, she doesn't want me in her house again, where am I going to get those five for him she, she's asking me. Without a home or even a job, Nambi had no option but to brave the cold streets of UAE where she slept for at least five months. You can't sleep every time you are scared of police. They can hunt you, they can... People can lap you from there, no something to eat, no something to drink, yet you have to, be, to, have to survive. One evening, while chatting with her friends, Nambi learned that an announcement had been put out calling on those stranded in the UAE and ready to return home to come up. They converged at a place called a wheel, which was a detention center. Here, there were other people from other African countries, including Nigeria, Cameroon, and Sierra Leone. They just lock that door every time. No going outside. You have to stay inside. No going anywhere. Even if to see, to see sunshine, it, it wasn't easy for us. Rita Nabuma is one of the 12 Ugandans who recently returned from the UAE. However, unlike others, Nabuma returned in a wheelchair. Nabuma says after suffering mistreatment in her employer's house, she ran away to a wheel hoping to return to Uganda. This is where she fell sick. There is no medication. There is only offer. They only give us food. Even if we want and you cannot get it. They could bring the ambulance. They check you after they go without even turn a door. That's pain. Even I was having fever, headache, back pain. Nabuma is currently receiving treatment at a health facility in Kampala. She says that over 200 Ugandans are still stranded in the UAE detention centers, hoping they will return home safely and healthy. Olivia Kumgisha, NTV News.